Pronto, pronto. O que é pau? pau? Our very success gained, gained you, will you will agree, agree by, by skill, who draw more people, more people than ever, never to see it. it. And that, and that will benefit many, many more clubs, clubs than Rangers. Rangers. Let the Let others, others come, come after us. We welcome, we welcome the, chase. the chase. It is, it healthy, is healthy for us. For us. We, will we will never hide from, from it. Never, never fear. fear. Inevitably, inevitably, we shall, we shall have, have our years of failure. failure. And, and when they arrive, arrive we, must we must review tolerance and sanity. And sanity. No, matter no matter the days, the days of anxiety, anxiety that come our way, way we shall emerge stronger because of the trials to be overcome. That has been the philosophy of the Rangers since the days of the gallant pioneers. To be a real is a sensitive trust of upholding all such name means in this frame of football. He must be true in the assessment of what the Bible seeks from them. No true ranger has ever failed in the position set him. Let the others come after us. We welcome the chase. Hello, Hello, good evening and welcome to the Rangers Radio. Join myself, Fox, here on the panel this evening. It's a one and only... Man. And, and my mate, the fox. How are we doing, boys? How are we doing, mate? Can I just say a big good evening to the guys in the panel? Huge good evening to the guys in the lobby and to all the Rangers fans all over the world. Good evening and welcome to Rangers Radio. Right, okay. Well, I'm starting with us. You just got to get two calls at any time. It's going to be a busy show, I think. Ah, well, we'll get we'll get to the calls in a minute, because I wasn't going to give you a short say. Okay. Bridge man, you just thought. Ah, very very good performance, wasn't it? Really. I don't want to go slagging now. You've heard me saying it myself many times. I don't like to slag too much. However, it was probably. Uh, and, and all the, the years, years I've been, been, been going to watch football, football particularly, particularly Rangers, Rangers it's probably the poorest performance I've seen of them. Uh, it, it looked, looked like uh, they had no ball. ball. It, it looked, looked like they were all scared. scared. It, it looked, looked like, like they didn't know who they were playing against. against. And, and it, it looked, looked like they'd, they'd never played for Rangers, Rangers before. before. However, not, not trying, trying to make excuses for any end of the description, I wonder why they didn't do that. Why did they give away all the space, all the midfield? Celtic. Is that, is that, was, was that the plan? Was that the, the shape that we were playing? It looked like they, were, they started off like 4-2-2-1 four, 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 two, 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 or something like that, you know. 4-2-2-1-1. Uh, two, 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 one, one. One. That, that's, that's just, just what it looked like. like. And, and it was just nonsense. nonsense. Utter nonsense. And we and never, never, never really had any challenges in the first half, half or any proper challenges. And, and of course, the main man made me genuinely hate it just stole it. It just stole it. So did everybody else. And unfortunately, the Celtic team. And then the 20th half was just really, really. It's quite an easy stall. Well, one of the first things, so to the young man, McCrory, 19 or 20 years of age, he's a guy who's making his mind to get a fit more fox. At the moment, he ain't a set of half. No, I've discussed him in a time on here, mate. Maybe, Maybe a position, position from, from later on in his career, career but at the moment, if he was played at centre or centre of defence, me, I think he was up against, I think, uh, Dembele deliberately targeted him, was instructed to target him, too strong for him. As I say, he should have played in the midfield where he needed a ball winner and wasn't placed there. Yeah, he never played in the midfield at all, did he? Oh, I couldn't walk out of me. Uh, Andy, Andy Allard was playing, playing as an exiled left, left back, back. I don't know if that, that, that was going to play as an ace. Dorans was playing next to the two centre offs and there was no in it. I couldn't even work, I just couldn't get a beat from it. It was just wonderful, wasn't it, to watch? It's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. We actually, there were times, I mean, I was counting up some of them. There was some of the passing routines that they were doing, like 17 and 18 passes. And obviously there was some more than that. But but my goodness, goodness gracious, we, we never, never even looked, looked at it. We never, never even looked, looked for the ball. ball. We just, just let, let them keep it. it. And, and they, they just, just strolled the game. They just strolled the first half. Way, 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 way above any we have had. Way, way, way above us. Well, well, obviously, there's loads, loads and loads, loads of top points. points. I'll, I'll give you my thoughts, Fox, and then we'll move on with the show. OK, bud. We started off real well with the ball retention. And I'll agree with you, Bridget. What does this do? But just try to keep my shape trapped deep in. It, it, it was, it was, when we got the ball, it was 
I don't know how many times you've passed through the park, passed it behind people, stray passes. So we never get a foothold in the game. Uh, only looked a matter of time before they scored watching that match. But when we did get the goal, what a poor defensive goal. I think gave the ball away in midfield. They can do their right. The ball goes into the defender. He does not a lot against Sean McCrory. He just passes it. And I didn't think West looked brilliant to wait at Fox. It was, it was the hardest hit to shot, shot, at, shot I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I think, think that's, that's one, 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 one of his feelings. If, if you look at the goal on the other end, end maybe three or four inches, inches uh, tall, tall, maybe a bigger, bigger span, span, and they, and they might have gone there. No blame on the goalkeeper for it, it was just my observation. And then we huffed and puffed and kept getting the ball away. And you're thinking, get it one nothing here half time, and uh, we gave another goal away. And uh, Russell Martin... I don't know what he was trying to do, what he was thinking about. There was a lot of bad play in the build up to it, but he's got a chance to clear it. Never clears it. Bang, we're 2 nothing down. And you're thinking, oh God, here we go. Because 1 nothing at half time, you've seen it before, maybe get, you can turn it off time, maybe change something, do something. And then one of the major talking points of the game when young Andy Halliday got took off. Um, I've got to see from my point of view, and everybody, people might see it differently. I thought Andy was very poor yesterday, but I don't think he deserved that. I think if you're going to make a change, you date a half time. I can you see what, what what the point was that what the point of that date to what that was going to achieve for <coughs> you, I just don't know. Uh, so then two and a half and a half time. Started a wee bit lively and then a long ball at the top. I've watched it. I'm not 100 percent sure if it was a penalty. Uh, my eyes were a wee bit cloudy with Terence and Smirnoff. Um sending off of McCrory, three nothing down. And then we had about four or five chances miraculously. And missed some sitters, uh, Morales particularly. Have we never put that one in? Maybe as well in a bump it. And then we lost the fourth goal and we were lucky to go to there with uh, four nothing yesterday. That is the worst performance I have personally ever seen for any Rangers team against Celtic. Uh, no just we've had bigger scores than that, we've lost premier goals, but there may be the circumstances for the start to the finish. We were gutless. We lacked uh, quality on the ball, we lacked endeavour, we lacked shape, we were out coached, out thought, out battled, lack of pace, lack of desire. And then the questions will start and we'll, we'll then talk about after park. After park for me, the board have done a lot of good things, but ultimately we're a football club and the two big managerial decisions they've got wrong. That's only my view. Others may see it different. Fox, before we take the calls. I can't disagree with what you have said there. It was utterly gutless, mate. Uh, there was a load of players that had never seen it or met each other. There was no shape to the side. Uh, Celtic got their tactics right. They stretched us right across the park. I noticed that it stuck out like a sore thumb that both sides of their wings stuck very wide, which forced us to open up in the middle and then they passed the ball through us. It was as simple as that, mate. I was like watching a professional side against our youth team, to me, mate. Only our youth team would have put up a better fight, I think, than that. Can There's I come no back on the manager's there. side? So, sorry, Foxy, sorry. Aye, on you go, Brad. No, I was just going to say on the manager's side of it, I don't know what the manager's thoughts were. Uh, if, if we had a plan for the first half, it backfired badly. Uh, our players, in the positions that they were playing, when the ball came to them, they couldn't clear it properly. Whenever they, whenever they got a header, the header went virtually every time went straight to a Celtic player. Their passes, uh, as you mentioned a wee bit earlier, Ox, sometimes their passes, they were passing to the man who was there half a second, you know, half a second ago when they looked up. There's the man, I'll just pass the ball. And by the time the ball was going to him, the man was away. Uh, and obviously they weren't following the game. So they weren't, they weren't on, uh, speed, up to speed on the game at all. And I think that most of the time, whenever we passed the ball, and it was such a bad pass. Sometimes there were 20 yard passes, and they're thinking, why are they passing to Celtic players? That's exactly what I was thinking. Why are they always passing the boy a Celtic player? And it was just terrible to watch. It really was dreadful. 
and I hope that that wasn't the plan. Uh, obviously, I don't think it's a plan to bust the Celtic. You know, I mean, <laughs> if it was, it was a double bluff. Oh, you know, I mean, it was uh, it was just crazy. I just I just feel that the manager is going to get absolutely slated, and we on here have been saying that the manager, in reality, you know, all our straw polls that we've had has given him support and continued support, but at the same time, always said we don't think he's a Rangers manager. I think. Uh, Obviously, the performance against Celtic should always be better than that. Always. But I remember a couple of years ago when we played them in the semi-final when uh, when we were in the third division or something like that, the second division. I can't remember which division we were in. And uh, uh, they beat us 2 nothing again. And it was like 2 nothing, you know, and 20 nothing, you know. And yesterday was the same. You mentioned it earlier. They could have had 5, 6, 7 if they wanted. And I'm, I'm not kidding. They could have done. Anyway, we were, that's we, were, we were lucky to get no bridge. Absolutely. Uh, but but um, uh, I'm going to take your first call. Uh, I, was, uh, I was Ryan and then it's uh, uh, Mount we'll Vernon and then we'll Rudy. Go take them one at a time. Evening, Ryan. All right, uh, how you doing, mate? All hey, right, mate. Hi, Ryan. Yourself? Ah, uh, totally, absolutely devastated. Absolutely scared. Um, I've you know all the words that's been mentioned so far. Um, can I disagree with anything? Sometimes, I believe we went 4-5-1 four, four, yesterday. Um, I got the team on Saturday night, um, and I'll roll it. Um, I knew that Hardy would be playing. My, my only other thing with that was I thought maybe we could have played Holt in there, but I could understand the night before the game why we were going 4-5-1 to, to win the battle in the middle of the park. Which aye, is what aye, we spoke we, about that, was, that was the, the favourite time. However, the f- we, the joy we've had against Celtic this season the joy that we've got against them this season and the joy any team has got against them this season is by pressing them high up the park, getting in about them, don't let them set on the ball, play at a high tempo. We came out and done the opposite for what everybody else expected us to do. I cannot believe that we put in a performance like that in a semi-final against them. That is absolutely shocking. First of all, it comes to the manager. Tactically, I thought, he, as I say, I thought he got his formation right, but you don't play that formation and then sit off the game. And you can, it was clear to see the 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 directive was to let Celtic have the ball and we'll get into their shape and we'll they'll no break us down, they'll no break us through the lines. Uh, that you, you cannot play that way against Celtic, and that's Brian, Brian, can, I, can I ask you something? Can I ask you? I, I, I mean, without being flippant to our team yesterday. Everybody, most football teams, most professional teams, and particularly good teams, have got a ball winner in the centre of the park, yeah? Quite 100% right, mate. Yeah, we, every, we don't every, have it. We, we don't have Dorans, it, mate. is oh. a nice player. Andy Halliday, Andy's, Andy's a player who's he's living the dream, and uh, his dream turned into a nightmare yesterday. Um, the boy Dockett, he's a, a box-to-box runner. But there's no a ball winner amongst the three of them, and that was so apparent yesterday. We are. Me. Well, again, mate, I was just I want to say before you come in there, you know, that's that was my opinion, you know, for, for the manager side of things. But so you know what? Oh, I've said this before, mate, and you all, you everybody knows this. See, sometimes in games like that, tactics go out the window. It's about what you've got inside you, what you've got in your heart, and you against me. Individual battles. I'm going to go and win my individual battles. I don't know how many times we come out of all foreign games and we say, how did nobody get near Scott Brown there? How did nobody get in about him? How did nobody go and take a booking? How does nobody go and press the ball? It is the same stuff every week and I'm sorry to say, we are absolutely heartless shitbags. A lot of them. Absolute nonsense. That is a disgrace. That is the worst performance. The worst, as you say, Docs, I agree with you. I'm 33, mate, and that is the worst I've ever felt coming out of an old firm game. And as you said, I've been to Parkhead 5 1, Ibrox 5 1. That is the worst. You can take getting beat, but I can't take that for a Rangers team. That is an absolute disgrace. And you can see it happening for the 10th minute of the game. And I've never wanted to leave an old firm game so much in my life at half time because I'm disgusted with them. And I went back to the bus, and there was boys on my bus who I'm talking about are. Hardcore Rangers fans that go everywhere, never leave the gun, left at half time, left it with, with 30 minutes to go. We are in danger of losing, not just a generation. There's a young boy on our bus that's never seen Rangers beat Celtic. A young boy on our bus, never seen Rangers beat Celtic. He goes everywhere, he's 
I mean, they're only back for the last couple of years. He's never seen Rangers win. Well, when I were in a, a when we are in a real, real, we've got a real fight on our hands here to get the traditions back to your club. I seen forties there um, earlier on. Alves is cuddling and charming. All that came off the pitch. Come on, that is it. That is what we're up against here. And sometimes tactics go the windy. It's all about your heart and your desire. And once again, we looked at them. Brown's laughing at home. He's saying to Dons, he's got nice pocket. We didn't get a response. Morelos was, Morelos was fighting with Brown and, uh, and Tierney in the middle of the park. And there was a 40 today, the and there was not one Rangers club from anywhere near him just to back him up or anything at all. Absolute dire. They should be ashamed of themselves to look in the mirror. They tried to come towards it for anybody that was at the game. They tried to come towards the fans at the end. And they were getting absolute pelters. And they obviously landed and turned around. He went up the tunnel. The only one, Jason Hall came here and put his horn up. I apologise to the team. The rest of them, up the tunnel. Absolute disgrace, Ox. I'm, I'm scunnered. Totally, yeah, utterly scunnered. I sense that, right. Listen, I'm going to go to Mount and then we'll, we'll go to Rudy. Um, Mount. Even the Mount. Oh. Rudy, are you with us? I am, mate. Can you hear me all right? Yes, on you go, mate. Mind yeah, the expletives, mind uh, the expletives, brother. <laughs> oh, bro, right, I've already thought about it. <laughs> right, I'm going to give you some words here, right? This is for somebody that I know. This is the way he tweeted, OK? And I'll, do, I'll do this quickly, right? It's all for him, Dave. Some of the qualities I would like to see my team show are guts, energy, tempo, responsiveness, intensity, gusto, hunger, thirst, intent, nerve, tenacity, attitude, effort, Toil, heart, enthusiasm, and movement. I'll take any five of these, he says, at the end of it. You get none of them. Absolutely none of them. That is the most gutless, spineless, heartless display, like your Cellox, I have ever seen against them. I can take getting beat like young Ryan there, but there's a way you lose, there's a way of losing, and that certainly was there yesterday. That was nothing but a complete and utter embarrassment, and 4-0 actually flattered us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. put that ball in the net seven or eight times for us. And I'm sitting here and I'm listening to the stories about them all cheering when we got, they got drawn against them in the Scottish Cup, the, the semi-final of the National Cup, and they're all giving it the big yee sitting there cheering in a dressing room. It's plastered out of the papers. Morelos is giving it, I'm going to score against Celtic. He was gutless. Every single one of them. They should be utterly ashamed of themselves the day it hops. Utterly yeah, ashamed. Can I... You know what, mate? I am. I'm ashamed of them. I'm ashamed that they... Each one single one of the players that played there wore that jersey. And as for Graham Murray, a few short weeks ago we were talking, mind, would we give him the job? I don't think so, mate. No. That's no, just no, done it. No, that's done. He'll be lucky to see you this season and that more uh, I mean the we'll thing about Andy Halliday, what what was that all about? Four minutes couldn't get it, half mate. time. I couldn't get it. Mate. Mate. I just... see you waiting at half time. You embarrass the boy like that. All right, he wasn't having a good game, but surely who was? Any who manager, was? Oh, who was? But surely any manager worth his salt, Ox, would have waited to half time. No, he embarrassed the boy. No wonder he went half his rocker. He must have been shouting and saying. Yeah, get in there, Ox. Wait a minute, mate. Wait a minute. There's quite a few bits you need to time, mate. Carry on, Rudy, and then Drew Blues with he it. He wondered he was, Andy Halliday was going absolutely half his rocker. Half his rocker, because I would have done the exact same thing. Right, if there's yeah. fights in that dressing room, I, I should think there was fights in the dressing room. Because every one of them, as far as I'm concerned, deserved a slap in the push, the push for that. Because that was a disgraceful <laughs> performance yesterday. Cheers, cheers Rudy. I'm, I'm just going to go back to Ryan briefly. Ryan, you still there, mate? Listen, just just before we go, I know you've played quite a, a good standard and played professional football. There's an unwritten rule in, in the game, mate, that you don't take anybody off in the first half for some reason. Eh? Oh, we lost Ryan. Ryan, you still there? Oh, sure, I'm back in a few, if you can hear me. I, I'm going to go to True Blue then, I'll bring Sorry, it in. Mate. Sorry, mate. I mean, it was, a, it was an embarrassment, eh, Ox. It was an absolute embarrassment, as you said, mate. Cause I took any one of them off, um, but you know, he did that to the boy. I don't, I, you know, I don't mind his reaction. Honestly, I don't. Cause you know what? I'd probably be a bit more scunnered if he if he didn't do that. You know, but 
Um, I don't even know what he's thinking is behind that. I mean, my boys are saying today, I think he's done it to take the, the dairy off his cell. But I, I, I just need an idea. I mean, you're 2-0 down and then to go and put wind ass on. When, see, to be honest, at 2-0, the game is done ox. Huh? You just got to say, we're going to show up the middle of the park more so than trying to put wind ass on. So I'll let, I'll let other guys come in, mate. But you're right, huh? unwritten rule, total disgrace. You don't do that. No way yeah. you do that. Then we'll go to True Blue then. We'll go to Young Mount and we'll sneak to the boys' gate again. How are we mm-hmm. doing, True Blue? Aye, all right, pal. I'm on to renegotiate my contract. Don't give me these games again. <laughs> 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 uh, can't, I can't add much to what the boys have said there. Uh, we said it all yesterday and all. Gutless, spineless, hopeless, clueless. I put it down to the manager. Uh, I agree entirely what you're saying there about subbing somebody in four minutes to go in the first half. Made a scapegoat out of the boy. Uh, and I think it was to take a, a attention off his cell. Absolutely disgraceful. I say that he should never have been appointed full time. Uh, I think we lost that game off the park yesterday. But maybe I'm in a bit too early. Maybe, mate, maybe. Mount Vernon? Evening, guys. How's it going, all right? How are you doing, mate? Thanks very much. Good to see you yesterday, Brat. Uh, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Um, actually, that's that's um, that was that was one of the sorest games I've ever been to in my life, mate. Um, that's that's um, I that's probably the worst game I've ever I've ever watched Rangers and play. Um, boy beside me, I bro- eh, sorry, boy beside me um, was in tears. Um, it was that bad. Um, our club is our club is on the precipice of an absolute disaster, mate. Um, we've got a man um, who's been put in charge of um, your team that, 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 that there's an argument to say should he even be a youth coach um, at our club. Um, never mind the the, the managers uh, role at our club. Um, the players on the park um, were an absolute disgrace to that jersey. Um, every single one of them um, should be absolutely ashamed of herself. Um, the the only player who I could I, I could arguably say that, that showed anything, uh, maybe two players was Greg Doherty, but um, the the Halley situation um, I thought was an absolute disgrace. Um, that that's no befitting the Rangers Football Club. Um, that substitution that that is that was an absolute joke for him. Um, I don't know what he was trying to achieve, man. I don't yeah. really want, I get the point that maybe. Yeah. Um, um, uh, maybe he's thing a bit. All he's done is um, admit that he's wrong and he wants yeah. things so wrong. Can and to blame one man for that such a poor mm. performance is just. Can I just can I just quickly just sum up things, mate? And then I'll, I'll let the other boys come in because I, I just I need to get this off my chest. I mean, there, there is yourself, Foxtia, um, all the way up for you, Foxtia. Sure. Um, there was boys feeding on this, boys feeding fleece, boys feeding um, across the water, my brothers across the water, um, boy from the bus from Preston. They came up to see that. 24,000 bears have come up, made arrangements to go and see that team. That was an absolute disgrace, a performance for your team. And I'm absolutely seething, mate. I'm absolutely seething about that. The big thing for me, guys, is that your board have got a lot of questions to answer. I've no, I'm no one for coming on here and, 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 and going off my head and you know, all that. But that board is an absolute joke, mate. They are an absolute disgrace. We've seen young young potential like David Bates been been let go. This this board needs to get an absolute grip of herself. The next the next step is an as a manager. That that man Graham Murphy must be removed forthwith, in my opinion. Somebody put in charge for the rest of the season. Reset reset. It's it's just it's just an absolute joke, mate. And and I feel sorry for guys like yourself who let's be honest, have like maybe a, a eight or nine year journey ahead of them back down the road after that, mate. So. Look, like, mate, I, I just, I, I can't even, that's the worst performance I've ever seen. It's a well, it great club, mate. And you summed up yourself at the top possibly, of the show, mate. You know? Possibly was, mate. What I will say is, um, um, and I'm sure we'll go into it, but the boardroom, the boardroom uh, have done a lot of good stuff for us. Um, but obviously the big big, big decisions that influence the, what we see in the park is a managerial position. And we've known the manager in place for approximately 18 months. Bridgeman, you wanted to come in? I just, I just wanted to say that I, I, know we're going to, I, I know for a fact we're going to absolutely blame the manager. And I thought the decision to take Andy Halliday off was the craziest decision I've ever seen from any manager. I think it's the worst performance in my lifetime of watching the Rangers. It's the worst performance I've seen 
uh, I'm, I'm, I know we're saying it's gutless and things like that and he didn't have any heart. I don't know if the manager had told them not to go in and tackle. I honestly don't know if they were told this, right? Because that's what it looked like. It looked like they didn't want to go in and tackle, which left the it left them, shall we say, with nothing to do and nowhere to go because all they did was just hammer us and punish us for not tackling, to be honest. It was what it was looking for was somebody to put their foot through some you know, a really good tackle win, win the ball. But I think uh, I think Scott Brown who got maybe maybe got tackled three times during the whole game and won each one. And every single tackle at our white midfield went in, they lost it. With, with, with the defenders running back, they couldn't get goal side. They didn't know where goal side was. That's that's just crazy. Just crazy play. So I don't know whether it was tactics or no. I hope some of it was tactics because I hate to think that we had 11 players out there with absolutely not one half between the three, between 11 of them. That's what, what I, I say. What I said to Fox yesterday after about 15 minutes, and I'll come to Ryan with this, I'll go to Fox then, Ryan. I said to Fox, we've got to go man for man. They've got to pass everybody on. There's no shape to that team. Everybody's got to pick up an individual jersey and see where it takes us. But with no leadership on the park, Fox. That's great. We've no had a leader, mate, for the last two years. Maybe mayor. Uh, but uh, can I go back to the Andy Halliday decision? Of course, mate. Andy Halliday was having a nightmare, mate. Let's stop feeling sorry for people that were substitutes. We'll probably get the same with Candias as well, coming up as well. Manager had to do something. As people rightly said, they weren't getting tackles in. I don't know what Andy Halliday's job was was supposed to be in that game because I don't think Andy Halliday knew, knew what he was doing either, mate. They were waltzing past him. Absolutely waltzing past him. He's slow. He's no good in the tackle. We said this before the, the game on Friday night. That was my dread, him going into the midfield. And uh, it showed me Celtic outthought us and outfought us, mate. And uh, as for going about kicking people, we couldn't get near. We were only within two yards of some of the players to even get a tackle in. The organisation was so bad. But that goes down to the players as well as the, the manager, mate. They players never adjusted to anything in that game. We were bad enough in the first half and we continued in that theme for the second half. If they had any pride in being professional footballers, mate, they'd have put in a better effort than that. It's no all down to the manager. No, no, I mean, obviously they crossed the right line, but there, there was some mistakes in it. To me, Fox, and we, we, we discussed this yesterday, he looks as if he's a guy who's lost the players, mate. And I know that's a, a remark that comes out a lot. Um, I don't know why or when or what the catalyst for it's been, but I just don't think there's, there seems to be a lack of respect. Ryan? Uh, I 100% agree, uh, also what you're saying, with, with the lost the dressing room um, piece there, mate. To me, he's too much a nice guy. Um, you know, I heard people saying before, you know, he's a nice guy, Mr. Murray, and he, he knows what the club's all about. Absolute nonsense. You know, players smell weakness within a manager. The the weak players in amongst that squad were the were the guys who it made sure that when somebody did come in to give them a kick in the ass, i.e. Kachinia. Now, I know that Kachinia wasn't everybody's cup of tea, and I know he made mistakes, and I know he shouldn't have been there. But he came in and he done what, what we all said last year. He came in and he treated the ones that one day didn't you get the act together, one day doing this and one day doing that. Was that right? No, today he came out at six in the morning, you came out at six in the morning and all, but he got slaughtered for that because in, the, in this day and age, you, you can't do that to players anymore because they're all pampered. And see when they all came out, oh, we want Mertz as the manager, we want Mertz in, that's because they're weak and they know they'll get away with murder when Mertz is the manager. But when things start, when the shit starts hitting the fan, the players now realise that you know, he is a weak guy and he is a weak manager and, you know, there isn't anything about him there. So, you know, that's my opinion. I didn't want the guy anywhere near, um, you know, the, the, the first team uh, manager's job as it is. Never mind the end of the season. Um, for me, as I say, tactically, he got it. In my opinion, he got it right. But... I would have played, set up four five one yesterday. I would have had McCrory. I would have had McCrory in midfield, mate. I would have had McCrory. I'd have had. I'd have played Holt in there, um, and you know I'd have played. But the problem with it being was he didn't obviously want to play um, Alves and, and Martin at the back together. But uh, for me, he set up right. 
But he's ta- the, the, the way of setting up that was totally different. For me, if I'm setting up 4 5 1, I thought to myself Saturday night, right, good, because he's going to go man for man in the middle of the park. So you'll say Halliday v Brown, Doherty versus in Charm, and uh, who else was in there? Sorry, try to hint, I've lost my train of thought. Dorans um, against Logic, for instance, and just match up the three in there. And that's what I thought they would do, because to me, that's what any other football team out there would do. You go and match up in the middle of the park. And, and that's your jobs and it's your personal battles and it's your pride and and unfortunately I watched that team on Saturday Motherwell against Aberdeen battle and fight for each other and fight for our jersey and fight for our teammate beside them see us we're gutless man absolute gutless as I said earlier you've got you get Brown and Lustig and all that what he noisy Rangers fans up what he go ahead with some of the players laughing in their faces the, the, the fourth penalty Bro- uh, Broom is uh, stunning laughing at, at Holt not even a reaction in them, not even a bit of anything at all. Not even a, you know what I talked about leaders earlier on? You've got your leader standing at the side of the park, produces nothing, don't see him saying hardly anything at the side of the park. Because he's not a leader, man. Can, can, I mean, can I just come in quickly on something that's just annoying the living daylight? See, I mean, see, at the end of the match, Bruno Alves cuddling that Celtic player, I was, I was wanting to, honestly, I don't want to. No offence, right? I know it's a, a radio station, but do you know what? I certainly wouldn't have been doing that to the, the guy on the way after the part. Do you know what I mean? Um, here's, here's the, 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 you know, it's just, it's just, you know what? Your players are too soft, you know, and, and, and do you know what? Brun, Brun's running about thinking, think he's, think he's, um, he's, he's betting by the world. I just, mate, honestly, do you know what we should have done? See, see you in the third goal, but went in, do you know what? We should have just went into mode and just, do them, do you know what? Because but they know what? Still, team have they got them? No, they don't, point. and that's the point, mate. That's the point I'm trying to make. Is that seen down the road? Somebody made it on Twitter there, there, there earlier. You wouldn't have seen Richard Goff cuddling, you know, Roy, uh, whoever the Celtic captain there, there was. You know, Bruno Alves is cuddling somebody at the end of the, the game. Do you know what? Honestly, going absolutely going to a flying focus to yourself, mate. It's not good enough. It's never been good enough for you. These players, he, he, these he players are only good enough to wear that jersey, mate. And at the end, I'm no, I'm no normal like this Oxford, but I tell you, see, yesterday, I could honestly get my, my all the way up that road, all the way up battle, Battlefield Road. It wasn't good enough for your team, and you know what? We deserve better. Your fans deserve better. You're right, the fans deserve better. Right, no, sorry. Right, no, sorry. Right, no, right, no, right, right. All week, all week, our players and our manager are sat and read papers where the Celtic players and Brendan Rodgers Basically, we're laughing at them in press conferences, taking the mic out of them. You know what I mean? And they've done it on the park, and not one, not one single Rangers player thought, I'm going to let these fakers have it today, man, for everything they've said all week. They sniggered, they made snide remarks all week long it was going on, in the run up to the game, and the media were loving it. And they loved it even better when they players went onto that park and put Absolutely, no fight whatsoever. No fight whatsoever, and that's just not acceptable. I don't care whether you know we play badly and scrape a one nil one. I'll take that every single day compared to what I watched yesterday. Because that's that them with the humility. Is that right, Brady? Is that them with the humility and the respect to other teams? All the don't respect us one bit, pal. All the you know, your hatred. All week. It was good well, one at a time. One at a time. Sorry, I'm sorry, no, Oxo. You don't no, mind that. No, you carry on. You're not allowed to run. You were in possession of the chair, as they say. <laughs> and uh, you would have thought that they'd have been sitting in that dressing room before the game started, absolutely bursting to get out there and tear into him. See, after five or ten minutes, I was texting my mate saying, Where's the tackles? Why are they not flying into tackles and getting in about this mob? We stood after them, they let them play. There was a huge gap in the middle of the park because their men went wide and the our midfielders were moving out to try and match them and it left a huge gap in the middle of the park. Absolutely gutless. They sit there and listen to Brendan Rodgers all week and his players, Scott Brown and the rest of them, making all the snide remarks and all the sniggery remarks they made with all their wee pals in the media. You'd have thought they'd have been absolutely burning to get out onto that park and tear in about them. And I've never seen anything absolute like it. Just it was what I thought back to him. It just didn't nothing, seem to bother nothing, him. There was nothing to see because nothing happened. Bridge went some, him out, sorry, just, him out. Just, just quickly there. So, uh, Fox was saying Celtic out for us. They didn't need to outfight us because there was no, no fight there for them to outfight. 
I don't think you could see any of their players were outstanding. They didn't have to be. And you go Briggs and then we'll go to Mount. I, would, uh, I have to agree with Rudy uh, and, and, and Ryan McCombe. And everybody said, we've said what we've said. However, I just don't personally want to tear, tear the whole team apart. Uh, I want to be able to say we, we have to salvage something from the team uh, and some resemblance of, of a bit of guile within the team to, to take us on to the next games because we've got very, very, very important games, including one at Parkhead in a few weeks' time. And we need to recover. We need to recover. No matter what happens, we need to recover. Otherwise, they, they were laughing at us at the weekend, as Rudy, Rudy quite rightly said. I was shouting at the top of my voice, they're fucking laughing at you, stick one on them. Because <laughs> 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 that's what you would do. You'd do it. You have no problem at all. The only person that fought them, in my opinion, Ryan may disagree slightly here, the only person that fought them, in my opinion, was, uh, was uh, Morelos. Morelos, they were battering Morelos all on, over the place. On, and yeah. he was he was trying to get into them. And he, he he took Scott Brown on. And, you know, I thought to myself, brilliant. You know, in the first half, Andy Halliday did the same with Scott Brown. And Scott Brown backed away. Andy Halliday held the ball. And as if to say, well, come and take it off me. And he, and he backed away. He wouldn't do it. So uh, I thought, good, good on you, Andy Halliday. But that's, unfortunately, that was all Andy Halliday done. Or may I say, because I'm, I'm a big doubter on this. I don't know if they were allowed to do it. I don't know if the manager turned on and said to them that you'll play this shape and that's all there is to it. And somewhere along the line, the whole thing just fell apart for them. But there's uh, times when, when, Bridge man, when you cross the white line, right, and you're playing a game of football and you know it's no going well and you see somebody stretching, you know, we could, we could all see Storm and watching that or sit and watch whatever you want to see yesterday. Players, professional players, guys that are getting played a lot of money, because some of your players are getting paid a lot of money. I've got to have the gumption and the know-how to make decisions for themselves also. So that there's a combination of the two there. There's pe- people on the parts who'd be able to say, listen, you need to get tight to him, stick tight to him for the next 10 minutes. That's all part of the game. And yeah. if you don't think it is, it's just the manager. The people are in cuckoo land. Mount Vernon, then we'll go to True Blue. Biggest thing for me yesterday, guys, and, and I think it's... Was it was it was the lack of fight? I think that's what Bob said on here. Was that do you know what? I know it sounds mental, but it. I, I think if we'd have stuck one on Sunday, do you know what I mean? First couple of minutes, stuck one on Sunday. You know, Halliday, Dorans, Dorkey, get and absolutely blitter one of them. I mean, absolutely blitter them. That to get that to go us up. If you if you'd have noticed, if you take it back to the game at Park Key, and I'll game with Morelos, you know, missed it, all the chances. What you seen for your players in that second half was a desire to get close to them. I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna enlighten everybody on Rangers Radio. They're a better team than us, that's a fact. They've got better players than us. But do you know something see yesterday? They outfought us, which was the most galling part of that performance. We have to get tight to them. We had to get tight to them, we had to battle, we had to bring it into a scrap, we had to bring it into an old firm match. Murty tried to play football against them in a tactical football match. It wasn't gonna work for us. Our players and their friends shot it yesterday. And that then, yeah. that's that's that, and, and I don't like using that language, mate. But that that's what happened, mate. They they didn't know what they didn't want to fight. They didn't want to get then to take. Okay, Andy Halliday wasn't the best player, but to take Andy Halliday off in that situation to bring the boy Josh Windass, an absolute gutless individual, in that top, to to, to bring him on was an abs- It was the worst part of that game for me. We had to go out there and we had to fight them, mate. That's the only way we're going to win an all fun match with that team that we've got there now, is to go out and turn into a fight, turn into a scrap. But our players can't do it. And do you know something? See the seven, the six or seven blue noses in that team, they should be ashamed of themselves because you know what? If I was out there, right, I know it might not have been the best football player in the world, but do you know what? See if I was out there, I'd have go, I'd have go tight to them, I'd have wanted to scrap with them. And that's, that's what we've got today. I'm sorry, mate, it just wasn't good enough. Yeah. True yeah, blue, yeah. and then we're being joined by Big Al. True blue. Uh, again, I didn't see the appointment. Uh, Graham Murray any different for the appointment of Kenny McDowell at the time. I think I've said it before, it was a smoke screen for the board, and I think the questions need to be asked off the park, quite honestly. I don't think there was a fight to be had yesterday. Somebody mentioned it earlier. There was no fight in us. For me, it should have been a long ball and press him up the park yesterday. That was how good we were. Uh, Listen, I've used every possible description to describe them yesterday. They usually begin ending in less. 
you know, and that's, that's the way I feel about it. You know, there's bigger questions to be asked, I think. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, somebody said to me, Truby, just before we go to Big Al, they're chatting and they said, uh, maybe that was a better result for us than uh, getting beat 2-1 and maybe losing a goal in the last minute because at least with the reality we've got where we are. But speaking you. But speaking yesterday, Ox, and I say to the boys, you know, is there anything positive we can to take out that, expect and get to LTF off, quite honestly. Uh, and the thing for me was, that was so bad yesterday, there must be action now at Ibrox. There uh, must that's be. what I mean. In terms of, you know, Dave King must be pulling his hair out with the administration and what's going on at Ibrox in terms of recruitment and common sense sometimes. It's absolutely shocking. We'll no beat them on the park till we start competing with them off the park. That's my feeling on it, mate. And I know I mean, you say talking about the board and all the rest of it, but I think they're free think, ride everywhere. I think, they're, I think they're entitled with the... the um, if I would say since the war button, the back out the finish, which we knew was... Everybody knew it was coming to an end about uh, six weeks before it happened. So in reality, Marty came in, I'm going to say, last January. So it's no far away for 18 months. We've not really had a board. Anyway, how are we doing, Big Al? Not bad, gentlemen. Uh, sorry, bad. A, a manager. Um, On you go, mate. Um, rather disappointed. Um, Andy Halliday, I wish he shows as much fight on the park. He wouldn't be getting subbed. That's the problem. Um, he probably should never have been back at the club. I'm not using him as a, a, a scapegoat. I'm just stating fact. He's got nothing on the park, no heart, no desire. So he probably shouldn't even be back at the club. Um, weak leadership throughout the club. He's all talking about King, and I can hear you. They're all sympathetic to him. You don't want to criticise him. We're the people that need to criticise him. God knows, I don't think he listens to any of the fans, but it starts with him. They've made decisions that have been totally detrimental to our club, and this is where we are. I was in the papers, this could be a changing point. They were comparing us to when we beat Celtic. That will never happen. That should have happened that day when we did beat Celtic. We should have powered on, but they didn't. Weak leadership at the top of the club, weak leadership at the side of the park. And weak players. We just don't have a pool of players that can change it. We said on Saturday night before the show, um, hey, before the game, sorry, that the players, if they see it going wrong, they have to change it themselves. Not one of them can step up to it. No cojones in the team whatsoever. And it's very disappointing. You've read the uh, statements, you say, uh, Bill Struth. They're in the, the dawns of time, the statements, because... None of the players would actually know where these statements come from, because I don't think any of them have ever read them. You might be right there, but I'll, you might be right. I'll tell you where we go. I I'll, do not. I'll, I'll tell you where we go. Somebody with cojones has got to take it on. Now, if the people have been... Right, the, if they've been... The, if the oh, administration... Before we finish here. On you uh, go. Sorry. But that's all right. That's all right. I'm trying to catch a plane here. Sorry, boys. It's as if you're out of breath, mate. Right. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to get a fucking... Getting past no, no. in the airport, murder. Oh, sorry. That's all right if you were in charge of Rangers. But as a fan, it's no fans that are in charge, it's businessmen. And they're not running it. But they wouldn't have run their own business, is that bad, run. mate? Well, you I've heard have, that quote as well. You wouldn't have a. You wouldn't have, a um, you wouldn't have the guy, I mean, look, Marty can be getting Marty, man. I need to show him a bit of respect. Graham Marty came in. And, um, he done a job for us. He was asked to do a job, and it's not his fault. He's put in that position. I think if we're yeah, all being well, honest, he, everybody he, he knew how it was going to end up. Nah, he he should have knew himself. He's not he's not got go what it takes. He should have said, "No, I'm not taking it." Um, he should have been honest to himself. He should have been honest to us. We can't let you go, guys. Anytime time we need a part in the area. Jesus. All right, right I'll see you later, mate. Cheers, take it, buddy. What a man! What a man! Are we no are we no all missing a point here, mate? There you go, mate. There's a lot of talk about Marty Lowe's the dressing room. These players are paid to come and play for Rangers, mate. They're there to play in positions they're asked to play. They're asked to carry out tactics that the for any game at any given time. 
there seems to be unrest in the dressing room and it happened with Pedro and it's happening again. They were off for Murty coming in and they played well enough, plenty of fight and everything else. So to me it looks as though certain people in the playing squad have decided that they will know who or what or whom is going to be the next Rangers manager. They had five games left to finish their season, six if they could have challenged in that game yesterday. But it's 25. Could they not just have pulled together for our huge support and give us something to look forward to instead of probably going to boot in wee cliques and stabbing the guy that's got the job in the back? I think a lot of people should be looking at the players a lot more than they're looking at the manager. We've got a mixture of players there, Fox. Obviously, we've got the boys that's come in, the new players that's come in. We've got people that's been connected with our club a long time. Kenny Miller, uh, Lee Wallace have been there a long time. Then you've got the sort of Warburton uh, mixture in between. I, I just want to know where to start and know, see where the problem is, mate. But obviously, well, if you're involved in it and you're inside, you, you would mate, know. And that, that's the number what, two's role. Whatever happened yesterday, mate, there's all uh, the way Halliday reacted, etc. Mate, they have no respect for the manager. No, that's not their job, mate. Their job is to come and play for Rangers. They're well paid for it. And if they can't accept whoever's in charge asking them what to do a certain job, they should be gone for the club before the guy that's in charge, mate. There is no t- no club can survive when players think that they run the club. And they should, the, the Rangers board should find out who are the agitators in that dressing room. Is it because certain players are not playing and the manager doesn't see them good enough to play? Or whatever it is, that's not their job. Their job is to go there and play football, mate. No try and run Rangers Football Club. Oh, oh so can I just quickly come in, mate? And I, I hate to do this because I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm no like this, mate. But, and I don't like doing this. I don't like saying it, right? You see, if you look at them across the city, right? We're we we talking about players like Fox, isn't that? It's talking about players there, right? We're talking about the manager, right? Whether they like it or no, uh, Brendan Rodgers is a top drawer manager. I hate to say it, right? He is. He is. He's came for where he's came for, right? He was a, a ball here away if he won in the Premier League, let's be honest, right? Now, that's what a top class manager does to players. If you look at, this, if you look at the, the players, the, the, the semi final that we beat them, there is I think somebody massive... said there was 10. I think there was 10 of the players in Rome just on That's what I'm trying to say, mate, right? Aye. The boys on here, boys on here say, oh, this boy's no good enough, this boy's no good enough, this boy's no good enough. The matter of fact is, if we get a good manager in, we get a quality manager in, you know, like a, like a, I, I don't know who that's going to be. I'm, I'm not trying to give that, but this is the difference. <laughs> is a quality manager with a name who, with, with, who demands respect from the first whistle. That's, that's, what, that's what can happen. And for me, guys, that's what we need to do. We need to go out and get the best possible manager we can and give that man as much resources as we possibly can. Because, you know, something, that's that's what it's going to take, guys. It's not going to take another has-been, you know, another... Uh, it's not going to take, like, a Pedro. It's going to take a, an absolute top-drawer manager to come in and change your club about. That's what we need. It's no... A, it, it's no... It's no another Warburton or a Cassini or a... Or a Murty, we're going to need a top door manager who's going to who's going to demand respect the first day he comes in for me. Can I come in there, Oxley? When you go, mate. When you go. I'm just going to say I agree hundred percent what he said. Yeah, hundred percent. When we were saying, I, be, I said it at the time we had Warburton, and then it blew up with Warburton. I said I thought Warburton was a top manager, uh, but unfortunately the, the politics behind the scene uh, was just too much. Uh, but we should have immediately went now as soon as as soon as Celtic signed. This, this manager that they've got, we should we should have matched it. The first opportunity, we should have matched it. We should have spent the two million pounds, whatever it takes. They went and spent two, two million quid. I know their circumstances are slightly different, are a lot different uh, if you count money, but we should have spent whatever money we could and getting a top manager in with a name. So we have to spend two million pounds, we spend two million pounds. That's what it'll take, because then you would have somebody at the side and it would be a leader. And he would pick somebody who could be a leader on the park. And that leader would be a leader, as opposed to uh, young Tavernier at the moment. No offence to Tavernier, I'm sorry. He's not a leader for Glasgow Rangers. He may be a, he may be a captain in, in a, lot of, a lot of different ways, but he's certainly not a leader. 
in so far as leading Rangers. Uh, there's absolutely no heart there whatsoever, in my opinion. None at all. That's all I've got to say that. I, I mean, um, taking Fox's point now, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I'm going to Ryan with this. It's a chicken and the egg, and then we'll go to True Blue. Sorry, before I, I bury the mission, we've been joined by Big Ulster. Evening, big man. Hello, how are you, mate? How are you doing, mate? Uh, Give your stuff. thoughts before we go to Ryan. On you go, mate. <laughs> no, just I, I was listening. Uh, everybody's saying uh, the sort of same as me, to be honest. I just think we're pathetic, to be honest. And I don't think anyone without blame for well, board management staff and players I think of all the decisions they made yesterday and the board's decisions uh, the last few managers any of the last few managers has led up to this and I, I'm just absolutely I don't even know what way to turn I try to be optimistic and look at positives for any anything that happens at the club but I'm struggling big time and like everybody else I'm just absolutely got it and there's boys there who went over from the club and I just you know, I feel sorry for them boys they've done a lot of travelling and, you know, I think we all can agree that Celtic probably is the better side on paper, probably on quality. But for boys that, that do that travel, to turn up to watch a team who isn't even going to give them a battle on the form, which already aren't even going to try and, and give their all, even if they haven't got the ability, but at least try and put a bit of fight in. I think that's absolutely a disgrace. And I think it's time to, to, to put our focus on the board now and demand a proper manager, no more up and coming managers and no more projects. They need to go out, spend big, because at the end of the day, we're wasting millions of pounds on these different managers, putting different projects in and trying to have new players. I think put them all our eggs in one basket, get a proper manager in, and I think things will hopefully turn for us. But it's up to the board now. They have to make the decision. All right, uh, Ryan, what's the, what's the first? Uh step to improve this for you? Uh, it's a hard unit, it, mate. You know, it's it's difficult because um you know there's no really an outstanding candidate out there to um to bring into the club and that's the problem I know. I think if you if you if you know you asked every every Rangers fan out there, you know probably we would all give you different names. There's no an outstanding candidate for us to come in now, which is a which is a problem. But for me mate, I agreed with I think it was Fox that says it last week or the week before we need to get a proper manager in place um, old school manager for me the, the, the man that springs to mind is Neil Warnock I think Cardiff are yeah. maybe now struggling um, to yeah, get yeah. automatic promotion so that might be uh, a valuable option for us I know he's got kind of Rangers at heart as well so we've got to go back to basics first of all uh, fundamentally players that we've got there I disagree you know what I think as Rangers, as Rangers fans as well, you know, we've been fickle the last couple of years and as Rangers fans as well, we've, we've accepted mediocrity. And I understand that we're no the club that we were when we weren't going through the nine in a row and the finance are under there, but me as a person, as a type of person I'm I'm just no one to accept mediocrity. So I don't accept jokers like, you know, Windass and, you know, Russell Martin, but, you know, guys like this, guys that are just... Alves, no, no interest. He just no get anything about him at all. Can Diaz? I hear boys. Can Diaz play the year this year? Come on, honestly, play the year. Daniel Can Diaz? We're kidding. We're, we're kidding ourselves on here. And as fans, we've got to want better, and we've got to shout it for the rooftops. But we're no happy about it. People say about Dave King and, and, and the board. I'm sorry, but if Dave King turns in the morning, or, or you know, uh, Park turns in the morning, and say right. You know, I don't want to be in the board anymore. That's it. No, where do we go for there? Who who comes in? Who takes over? You know, I believe he's Dave King's doing doing his best what he can do. All right, they're spending money on the stadium and they're doing other things in Oxford, right? And saying fundamentally, we're a football club and we've got to spend money on the park, and that's where it matters. But if you look at it, we probably have, we have spent decent amount of money. We've got the second biggest wage bill in Scotland. We've Pedro spent millions. Obviously, the recruitment by whoever it is, you know, parts of whatever bringing in Coutinho has had a massive impact on us, but, you know, when Coutinho, Coutinho was bringing these players in, we were all saying, nobody had ever seen them play, but we were all saying, oh, we're going to do this this year, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, you know, but, so now we need to go back to basics, um, we need to start for the back, build our way forward, and, uh, I'll tell you um, another thing, Ryan, nobody's seen that Russell Martin play, because if they did, why would they want to sign him, mate? Well, you know what, Ox, I remember, I remember, there was guys telling me, I he, he's a, he can play right back and all that. I'm thinking to myself, come on, he can play right back. You know what I mean? We're just, 
we are we we, we praised uh, Mark Allen in the, in the January, but for me, mate, I'm substandard. No, but to be honest, mate. I, substandard. I mean, who's came in in January and really, really done his a uh, turn? The boy was done okay. Done okay. Right. Done okay, mate. But see, see, be honest, mate. Okay is not good enough for me, mate. Okay is not good enough anymore. The guys are talking about. I eh, can't believe we've let, we've let Wilson and Bates go. Really, you're gonna go and win leagues and challenge with leagues with Danny Wilson and Bates as your centre halves. I mean, this is what we're talking about here. We, we, we as a club and as fans need to get back to. Really, really want to be at the top and no accepting substandard players. And we're, we're just getting guys like Candy Ass a new contract for an extra two years on an X amount of pounds. Just getting Windass a new contract on X amount of pounds. I'm sorry, see that Windass? He is an absolute joker. He's one of the worst players, forward thinking players I've ever seen playing for Rangers. I thought Barry McKay was heartless to I seen him. Uh, it's time now that we've got the, cut, the, kid, the kid gloves off and stopped. You know, I see guys on Twitter writing to him and all that. Oh, don't worry about it, Josh. We'll do a list and all that. Honestly, get, get these guys so f- f- far out of our club. Honestly, God, we need, we need a total overhaul again. Overhaul the whole squad and the whole mentality to start to finish. And guys don't like it. I'll tell you what, right now, I'd give my right arm to have Barry Ferguson and somebody like Alec Ray in amongst that. I really, really would because I, Barry Ferguson, he's got his haters out there, but I'll tell you what, he's a captain of Rangers, he really did bleed blue. Not like boys are saying it, but we a midfield three there at Doherty, eh, Dorans and Halliday, supposedly Rangers men, rush Rangers men, that. Kidding yourselves on, because see, if I was playing in, I'd have been up all night on Saturday night, could they wait to go into 70s, 50s, 50s, because that's what it's all about to play for Rangers. No, these jokers are playing anyway, mate. Yeah, yeah, mate. Can I just come in there a wee minute? Thanks, Thanks, yeah. It's just to say, you know, I think we need to, if we set our sights on one thing, we have to stick to the one thing. If we want to change players in the team, then we need to watch what we're doing because we need, <laughs> we need to be able to make sure that we've got the manager that we're speaking about. The number one target for Rangers, never mind <laughs> players, never mind this, never mind that. Looking at yesterday and all of our opinions all the way through for the last year or so, Right, number one target as a manager. Forget everything else. The players will need to play the way they've got the best they can do and take us through to the end of the season, hopefully getting second. But, as you know, it's looking, it's looking quite shaky at the moment, but we need to get a manager in. I don't care if it's... It's got to be a name that the world understands, that the people in the world know. This guy's a football player. This guy knows about football. Blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm, obviously, we want a, a fabulous record, but... You know, that fabulous record is going to cost you an awful lot of money, so I don't think we're going to get that. But we really need, first and foremost, and number one, forget everything else, get a manager and get him in and let him do the business. And he can take, sometimes, a manager can take mediocre players who are playing a bit below form, give them a chance, let's see what you've got, son, let's see how you train. Because that team we played yesterday looked as if they were miles fitter than us. I mean miles fitter than us. We never won one second ball yesterday. Not one second ball. We chased and we chased them all over the park. Never caught them. Sorry, boys. Hi, last word to the first half of the show, the one and only True Blue. I'm listening to guys there, and, you know, I kind of disagree with a lot of, uh, of what's been said, but we're digging at specific players there. I think to instill a mentality in there, I believe a decent manager would get ten times more out of that present squad. I'm talking about the present squad. There was nothing there on the park yesterday. Uh, you've got Morales and Doherty having a square goal with each other going up the tunnel, which should have been happening going down the tunnel. Uh, we need a manager first and foremost, and we need to finance this manager. We need to allow him time again. Uh, I think the board wrote off this season. I think they completely conceded this season with the appointment of uh, Graham Murphy. That's the way I feel about it. So there we you go. You did say that at the time, True Blue. You Aye. did say that at the time, mate. I've got that written, wrote my notes, mate, in the True Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom. Um, so, lads, if you don't mind going to mute, we'll have a tune for your fox.
One of Foxy's favourites. One of Foxy's favourites. Um, kind of ironic. I thought I would just play that for a bit of irony, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy. Hi. Uh, what's next, mate? Well, next for me is a manager. It's as simple as that. I wouldn't mind if... Uh, I think if Graham Murphy was any kind of man at all, you should have been in there this morning saying to the board, right, that's it. Time, my time's up. It's not working. And if he's not willing to do that, the board should do it. And even if it means getting the job to Jimmy Nicol for, between now, he's got five games. Hey, let's face it, Jimmy Nicol can't do any worse than Graham Murphy's done over the last few weeks for me. So that's the next thing. Next thing's a manager. You know, True say that, Ryan say that, Bridgeman say that. Push the boat out and get the best man that we can afford. Push the boat out and get a top manager. Get somebody that knows how to instill a bit of battle. And the second thing I would do, probably at the end of the season, is I'd then turn in and say to that manager, bring a leader into the, bring a leader into this club. Bring your captain in. Who do you want as a captain? And whatever it costs to get that captain, bring him in as well to work with the manager. Because right now we don't have a leader, as my boss said. There's no leader on the side of the park and there's no leader on the park. I don't different care t- about leaders. Different times, different I, times, really. But when Sunis walked in the door, I know it was in his, two of his first three signings were Chris Woods, yep. Terry Butcher, and automatically made them captain. I know they, yep, they are true. behind us at the moment, but is that the kind of thing you're that's looking for? What I'm, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, I said, I mentioned Neil Warnock last, last week. I know he's not everybody's cup of tea, but he knows how to make a team hard to beat. And we need to build for the back. And that's where my captain would play, at the back, like a Terry Butcher figure. We'll not get a Terry Butcher, but as close to that as we can get. I would say to the manager, the new manager, who's your captain going to be? Where is he? Let's go and get him. Bring him into the club. Whatever it costs, let's bring them in and then start to the back. In the next five games, I'll be quite happy to see Graham Murray step aside and Jimmy Nicol take her just for the five games. I just kind of see what's happened there. But the, 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 the chemistry between the two looks very, very poor. Uh, yes. fo- yes. uh, I'll take that one to Fox, uh, really, if you don't mind. Ah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a watcher on the, the bench. Yeah. Fox, the chemistry is pretty much for day one. It's looked pretty poor between Jimmy Nicol and then Murray. Look, oh. I mean, I, I know it's uh, it's only watching, but it's we've not seen a lot of communication between the two of them. Well, the thing is, uh, Jimmy Nicol was foisted, don't he? Murray, I don't think he wanted him, mate, but uh, the board decided that they were bringing him in. I don't know what for, he doesn't seem to do anything. And uh, a lot of people are now shouting that Jimmy Nicol should take control at the end of the season. Who wins there, guys? I know I keep going on about it. It's the players that are letting us down as well as the manager. But the players will all get a pass because they're worth money. What happens, if we, bring in, what happens if we bring in another manager and the same ones that's probably causing the, the trouble there are still at it, mate? Fox, I'm not giving any of the players a pass. Many of them. Because for me, three quarters of that team for the weekend can go come the summer, as far as I'm concerned. And that's why I said, push the boat out, get the best manager that we can possibly afford to bring in, and then you say to him, who's your captain going to be? Who do you want? We want a leader on the park, somebody that's going to work with you to build that team for the back, right to the front. Who do you want? And then you go and get him. That's why I said that, Fox. I'm no interested in giving any of them a pass because they don't deserve a pass. The way they humiliated us yesterday, none of them deserve a pass as far as I'm concerned. And I, know, I just I just make another wee quick point here as far as Morelos goes. He was about the only one that actually tried to stick the boot in a wee bit yesterday. But see, for me, what a blunder that was, no taking 10 million for him, Fox. Oof. That was a blunder. And I heard Blue Shadow saying it after the game when he was talking to True. And I said that at the time when I was asked, when that bid came in for him, would I take it? I said, aye, because that money can be used for next season to build a team next season. That's a good start. That 10 million is a good start. You can bring two or three quality players in with that money. We should have took that money. You won't get, you won't get that money for him now. 
No after the way he's played recently. There he done it again at the weekend, had a chance to score and failed after all his big talk. So I'm not giving any of the players a pass, but don't, don't worry about that, I don't, mate. I don't I'm think you're being no. fair there, Rudy. I mean, that was a lot, man. That was a harder chance for the one in Ibrox. That one was for three yards. Aye. <laughs> oh, oh, sir, can I just quickly just come in there, mate? On, <laughs> on you go, mate. On um, you go. I, I'm going I'm to apologise to somebody um, who I, I have a good pal of mine, George Logan. George Logan said when the Marty thing came out permanently that we were needing somebody like Barry Ferguson or a... Um, that type of sort of involvement within the setup, and I think, I think yesterday absolutely proved that. Mate, I, I totally disagreed at the time, but she's under like Barry Ferguson or somebody if, of his his caliber, um, been involved with that team yesterday. They would they would have absolutely painted the wall with the players. And you know something that that's something that we've got to have. I, I absolutely get that Jonathan Johansson, Jimmy Nicol are both good blue noses. Or no blue noses, but I know what the club means. I know. I mean, I cause, but JJ's maybe no. I think that's it. I think that's the problem as well, mate. Is that we've got to get winners in that team. We've got to have guys that know what it is to, to lift trophies at our club. Because as far as I'm concerned, the only two people in that squad who know what it's like to lift a trophy is Kenny Miller and Lee Wallace for our team. We need to get we need to get winners in that team on and off the park. I think for me, like, Lee Wallace has won a major honour, has he? I think he won the league, didn't he, the, the season before? No, not no, even mate. I think, well, no. there you go, mate. Sorry, big pardon then. That's what I'm trying to say is I think see somebody like Barry Ferguson in that team, not obviously in the team, but in the setup, mate, we are, we are a very, very experienced manager. I think that's going to be key because Barry Ferguson's a winner. He knows exactly what it's all about. A player like him, you know, it's it's that's what we need in there. We need guys that, you know, I see at half time where they've absolutely went tonto. I can imagine at half time. That boys would have been in there going to, you know, well, we've analysed this, we've analysed that. See, that isn't good enough. See see if it was, see if that was a Walter team or even Sunderland, Big Eck or, any, or a, or a Sunnis. They'd, they'd have been punch-ups at half-time. They'd have been going out with black eyes at, at, in the second half. And that's what we need. We need to get back to, to winning ways, you know. We need to you get back to... the nine in a row team, man. Uh, the amount uh, of punch-ups they had at half-time in the dressing rooms. You uh, know what I mean? Tearing guys, the can I come in there? Sorry, Rudy, can I just come in? No, you go on, you go on. I, I, listened, I listened to his interview after the game, and it's also been highlighted that one of the first questions that was asked to Marty was along the lines of, did you, did you go in and read the right act to the players, you know? And he turned around and says, you know, no, because it would cause conflict. For <laughs> me, for me, the interview was done there. If anybody's no, no listened to it, it's on the Rangers official YouTube channel from the official Rangers, uh, Rangers TV. Listen to his interview... First couple of words, and that's and that's what he said basically. Oh, that's right. he did. No, because it would cause conflict. I mean, who, seriously, I'm talking about I think guys should be getting, pin, pinning each other up against the, the you know the wall in there. Uh, you know what? It all goes back to the, the Joey Barton thing. For me, for 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 everything that I've heard about Joey Barton, Joey Barton stands up in the dressing room after being beat a Celtic five one, and is giving people their, their character, and and that's what I want at our club. Because we've got too many people in there, as, as Mount says there. Uh, does anybody honestly really believe that they were at each other's throats? I, I know Doc at the Marella said a wee bit of the pitch, but does anybody really believe there was players in there truly hurting? The way we are, the way we are guys are wanting to go ahead with each other on the stone. You know, watch the team, never mind on the pitch. We'll you know come back, so, to, come back right. to you, Ryan. We've been joined by a caller. Evening, caller. How are we doing, guys? Wheels. How are we doing, Wheels? What are you thinking? Um, embarrassed, mate. That's that's the only word that I can use to describe it. Oh, I'm not um, that sums it up, mate. I think a lot. Um, <coughs> I, I hear a lot of this. Um, you know, having Rangers fans playing for us and all this, right? You could have eleven Rangers fans on that park. See if you've no get the ability. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you support. Or how you still want, to you still want? Yeah. You still think Graham Murray's a man for the job? Wheels. That was his audition yesterday. For me, that that was his chance, and he's blew it. He's he's blew it. You know, he's he's not going to get it now. Quite simply. Um, do you know what? Do you know what embarrassed me the most? Right, it was near the score. It was near the way we played. It was the way that they we let them showboat 
how dare we let a team do that against us? You know, Griffiths keeping the ball up and he's feeding all that when he's got to take a corner. Brown laughing at people, going in for challenges with him. That, to me, that angers me. That really does anger me, how we can allow a team, especially our fiercest rivals, to do that against us. Do you know what I mean? I do, mate. I do, mate. Um, I think we like leadership and uh, we like, we've no go anybody with that streak in us um, uh, to take people on and close down. We've got players who are reasonable football players, but there's no mm. uh, ball winners, no leadership, no tacklers, and even with I mean, our centre yeah. halves, so the, the backbone of your team, mm. are the most physical I mean, in the can, world. You can coach, you know, you can coach certain things into players, you can coach ability. You know, things to do on the park and all that. The one thing you can of coach is heart. Correct. Correct. You can yeah, say that there, it's no there. You can, I say, there. Can, can I come in there, right, Oxshire? Wait a minute. Can boy can, right, okay, but, boy right, right. you go, Wheels. You've, you've, um, you've either got heart or you don't. And I never seen one bit of heart. Apart, apart from Doherty, and I said it during the game, he, to me, was the only one that was putting challenges in. Morel or Sai showed a bit of fight, but for me throughout the game, Docker he was the only one that actually showed. Docker, he put a bit of effort in, mate. But every time he got the ball, he passed through the park. Mhm. Aye. You know. True. <coughs> Aye. Yeah. But in you come, Bridge. Oh, I was just going to ask a question to everybody in the panel. If I was to say to you, guess, guess who would be the most dangerous player in a, against our team to score a goal? Who would you say? Tom Rogic. Correct. Number uh, one, Tom Rogic. What are we going to do? We're going to stop him scoring. OK, who's the big fella that I've got up front you need to watch it for? Oh, that's that big Dembele. Not a bad player, but get him boxed up, as young Bates did a few, uh, no last game, but the week, but the time before, uh, he said, hit him in his pocket. What happened? They ran riot. Dembele <laughs> ran riot with both our centre-halves, and unfortunately, Rogic scored a goal when there was three Rangers players, maybe even four Rangers players, within a couple of yards of him, and that man managed to twiddle his way in there within the box and put the ball in the net with a crap shot. I just can't believe it. What? I just can't believe what? it. Why did we not, sorry to put in there, Bridge, why did we not just play the same team that we played against them a few weeks ago? That, that to me, would have been the, that would have been the perfect way to go. Well, Bates is near to play. Every game, every well, game we've played, wheels. Every game we've played, even even that game, even the D game that we won four 0 we've surrendered the midfield, and we knew that. Well, we knew that we had to do something, but ultimately, what we try to do, I, I'm still in shot. I still can not work out with the tactics, but four five one was the way to go for me. And um, the spring bring his own. People go man to man in the midfield, and then as Ryan Wright was saying, you win your personal battles, and then you take it from there. When we played the the number ten ball or Windass or Miller, whoever in there, when a jersey short and it never worked. No, it couldn't have been any worse than what we witnessed yesterday. I'll give you that. I think we'll be joining our couple of callers, folks, are we? Oh, I dropped it. How are we doing, Bazza? Keep it clean. And George. <laughs> no bad, no bad, I'll try, no. How are we doing, mate? Give your thoughts. Ah, uh, yeah, um, I can't disagree with much about the panel or so in the night, you know. Um, I actually thought the game was lost before we even got on the pitch yesterday. See the, see the last game at Ibrooks? I think the stuff from was clean <coughs> up to us, right? And that should have been Marty's job to build to pull the players up because the players must have been down in the dumps like that. We can't beat them with 10 men. So his job should have been to pull them up. Do you know what I mean? Like, ah, we can go out and deal, deal with them, put in a few tackles, blah, blah, blah. Just get right in about them. But obviously he's not that type of guy. He's not that type of manager. So I think we were beat before we even went out there and that's what the players were fighting because I was looking at Tavern and Candias in the first half and they're getting down that ring. Some of the players just like that. What are they doing? No, they're not even like, it doesn't need to look as if they're trying 75% or nothing. It was just pure, I was so annoyed, man. It was just the lamps, the screen, the screen, 
for the effing hell are you staying now? And then that can affect every other part of the team I thought. And then it was just, it was just a disgrace, man. Turn it I need to blame Murray for that, but obviously I don't want to be too hard on the guy he's been put in this position, so it can go deeper on that, but... I'm on ultimately, the ultimately, it's the board, ultimately, it's a board that chose Murray, mate. Aye, I know, I know. Uh, and, and got it wrong, in my opinion. Just anyway, touch, can I just quickly yeah, touch just on the point? Just for having big George in and out. All right, sorry. Right, George, in you come, mate. Uh, <laughs> What's going on his throat? Must be a lot to say here, George. How you doing? You oh. hear me? Up? I can hear you, mate. How you doing, George? Aye. Big man. How you doing, big oh. man? How you doing, all right, boys? Yeah, I've, I, I think uh, everything that Ryan said tonight is one hundred percent by Um I have got to blame the board for getting him out of the job, um, but that's your board at the end of the day, and there was nobody else willing to take the fight on when when Charlton's at the club. So that's that's a different story altogether. But for me, I've said it for day one, I, I, I didn't understand how you can have a guy in there that we're all calling Murch, next again day after getting you call Mr Murray. That's not going to work, Cox. And I said that for day one. Um, I thought the whole time you needed a British manager in there. Um, and it started to go around and change, you know, maybe uh, Martinez and maybe De Boer. I, I, I'm back to thinking it's good to be a British guy again. I'm back, back to thinking it's good to be a Scottish guy, actually. Um and what Ryan said there about uh, Alex Ray, Barry Ferguson, Alex Bleach, all these guys, I- I'm back to thinking that's where we need to go because we wouldn't have got that humiliation yesterday, Ox, with these guys. These guys are winners. These guys have been in winning teams. They've been in um, Scotland teams that have done no bad as well. And that's that's the kind of things that we need back. We need fighters and winners back in our team. And we never had one of them in our team yesterday. I would do what Alex McLeish done when he got rid of all the boys and just sat them on the bench and brought in the young laddies. I would do that to the end of the season. Because we discussed it last week about going in Europe. I didn't want to go in Europe next year. I want to get a a, ma- a new manager, in, a, a half decent manager, whether it's going to be Steve Clark, whoever it's going to be, Alex McLe- I don't know who's going to be, right? Whoever it's going to be, but I think it should be a Scottish manager, a, at the very least, definitely a British manager. Get him in and let him have a full pre season. Forget about this fourth, uh, first round of the UEFA Cup and all that, Kieran. Get a new, complete team in and I'll get rid of every single one of the imposters in that team yesterday. There's no one of them. Fox has been saying about we dock it a year and a half away. He's maybe a, a year and a half away. I'd keep him till a year and a half. But there's not one of the guys in that team I would keep after yesterday. That's embarrassing. You, you can't go to a, an old firm game like that and stand up and get pumped, get hammered. And that's that, that comes with the very top. That's muddy. There's no leadership. There's no leadership on the part. The last time we had a leader on the part was Steve Davis. And that's how far back that's gone. Folk you slag Barry Ferguson about Barry Ferguson's Barry Ferguson's bang on what he says about our club. We have been embarrassing. We have been hammered on the park, off the park, and we do need to get a leader. We wouldn't have got that kind of hammer yesterday if Barry Ferguson was standing in the dugout. Andy right. Halliday, Andy Halliday was right when he was done and gone after. That's an absolute... You didn't do that with any football player. Four minutes to go, and the only reason he done it is because he was listening to Clyde one the other night and the boy said he doesn't care how to change a game. Absolutely embarrassing. He should have he should have been sacked today. But just as well he had a day after day because he'll be sacked tomorrow's morning just for that alone. You didn't do that in football box. You didn't take a guy off with four minutes to go, a professional football player, with four minutes to go, and he wasn't even the worst player in the park. He hung him out to dry yesterday. Twenty minutes he's played in about four, five, six weeks, whatever it is, and the young boy McCrory was hung out to dry yesterday as well. He's played fifty five minutes in about six months. He should be absolutely embarrassed what he'd done. He's supposed to be an under-21 coach and he left that young lad to do that yesterday. He should, be, he should walk away. We all can't exactly what he is. He's an absolute embarrassment to your football club. I wouldn't even give him an under-21 coach. Folk are turning around and saying he's in and blame the manager. They blame the board. Well, I'm blaming the manager. That's where it comes to. An absolute, an absolute embarrassing for it. Let that guy go back on that park after the key run he done in the uh, Ibrox after scoring the goal he went and hiding. And then he let him back on the park yesterday and destroyed Andy Halliday. Because Andy Halliday wasn't the worst player in the park. He wasn't a great ox, but he wasn't the worst player in the park yesterday. I wouldn't have known who he was the worst player in the park. I think Drew's why he came in here. That's me. Sorry, on you go, Fox. Uh, I'm just going to see the fascination with this at all. And I'm not just saying this to be controversial. Why would we want Alex Ray or Barry Ferguson in our dressing room? Both of them failed at management. Both of them are not exactly good coaches. You could get a guy out the terrace and that could show me her heart in the dressing room, mate, and shouting ball at people. 
when are we going to stop this gravy train and employing people because they're Rangers supporters? That's not what we need at this club. Mount Vernon said it earlier on, we need people that can do their job and are winners, mate. The two of them are good football players for Rangers. That doesn't mean they can do a job in our dressing room. Because if they could do a job, they'd be in employment. But uh, their last manager wasn't a Rangers man, Fox. How did he do as a job? I'm not talking, I'm not I'm just saying, look, Barry Ferguson was a terrific captain and a great football player. He's tried his hand at management and failed. Alex Ray is the same, mate. Good Rangers man, good football player, but we can't keep filling our dressing room with ex-players. Half of, them, half of the ex-players that we have got would only came to Ibrox because of the money. I wish people would realise that they're professional football players. They came, and some of them are still about the club. But that doesn't mean they can do a job for us, mate. But Fox, do you know? Do you know? Think I agree with what George is saying there. Do you know? Think I'm not talking about Barry Felsen coming in as a manager or even the number two, but to be to be a coach there. Or I think we need somebody in about but, the club who knows what it's all about, mate. Aye, well that that's fine. But as I say, you could get a guy out the ter- the terrace and he'd be like that, mate. Probably more passionate than they two are. And I'm not just picking a name. This is how we're getting into trouble. We've got people at Ibrox that shouldn't be there. Just because the Rangers support us. That's all I'm saying, you know. I don't, I, I'm not being you know, a manager either, Fox. I'm talking about him being in the in the dugout as a um, as a let's say Jimmy Nickel. Where's Jimmy? Where's Jimmy Nickel done? Where's Jimmy Nickel done? Absolutely nothing. But well, why is he there? Why is he there? Because he's an ex Rangers player. Walter Smith, obviously. Walter Smith. He's obviously still got this way with the board, didn't he? Walter Smith's been there for much, eh? in my opinion. Walter Smith said to, put to the board, put Jimmy Nicol in there, 100%. But we're trying to drive this club on. We can't keep going back in the past and saying, this guy with days a turn, this guy with days a turn. Fox, see if you're on social work, media, mate. I agree with you to a certain extent, but see if you're on social media today, and I agree with you to a certain extent, the amount of guys that I've heard today saying bring back Walter Smith, I, I agree with you, that's, that's no that's no the way forward to, to keep them back to Walter all the time. That's done, that's finished, but us as a fan, fan group, I believe what you're saying there to a certain extent, we do need to go forward, but at the same time, I agree with wholeheartedly with George is, but a new manager comes in, brings his an assistant manager, and brings Barry Ferguson in as a, as a first-team coach, not got a problem with that, because for me, Barry Ferguson should be involved with the club, and I, I don't... I, He's been one of the greatest captains, in, in, my, in my opinion, anyway, for, for age armour. One of the best players I've seen playing for Rangers. Absolute 100% Rangers fan, no even in question, no even in doubt. Moans the face half you, but do you know what? I love something like that, and that's what I like to see at the side of the park. So give me Barry Ferguson before a Graham Murty or a Jimmy Nicol or a, a Jonathan Johansson any day of the week, mate, any day of the week. Can I, I, I just come in quickly? I, I, I just think that's what's holding the club back, mate. Honestly, that's my own opinion. I'm an old guy that doesn't think very clearly, but I can see what goes <laughs> on at our club sometimes. On your own rules. <clears throat> so, see if what... Right, I know we're talking about there, you know, knocking back away and all that, right? But see if uh, Walter turned around the morning and said, right, I, I'll take him. Would, would you know be happy with that? I don't know how that would. I don't know how that would pan out, mate. I mean, it would be a popular choice um, for the fans, but the quality of our club is so much less than Walter even had to work with, even his second time around wheels. I don't know if it would. Um, the, if it would the, work too well. Uh, the the one that I don't understand that a lot of fans seem to be in is Steve Clark. I, to me, I just don't get it. Because well, I'll tell you how I, I, what, what I think about Steve Clark getting out of job uh, remains to be seen. But what I will say is he's took a team that were stranded at the bottom of the league and they're chasing their coattails now. Unbeaten in 11 games. Aye. Three draws, I, eight wins. I, I that's how that. people are talking about him, mate. And that's against us and against them and against... Uh, they beat the Tims, they beat us. But still, they beat 
No, I never said they did. I mean, that, that, but that, I can, that, what I'm saying is, can handle. Uh-huh. Oh, aye, it's where you, uh, where you see what the, the fella asked for. Yeah. Uh, his, stats, his stats are... Anyway, as you've noticed, we've been joined by Al 63. I hate it, I hate I think I'm basically past the anger sort of thing. Um, I purposely stayed away from the internet all yesterday as well, uh, and today. Um, I, I think a lot of your fans are just... Oh, what's the word then? Is it clouded? Um, their minds are clouded, their eyes are clouded. I'm not, I'm not quite sure which one it is. Um, I'm not sure if you saw the, the different films to do with the Return of the King and the Hobbits and stuff like that. No? I'm sure many of the listeners have anyway. Um, one of the guys, you can clearly see that his You've eyes are closed. Never mind. Right, right, I'll, right, I'll try to explain. Um, I think we're, we all beat about the bush. I think we've been watching really um, not so good players for a long, long time now. For, I would say, easily six, seven years. Uh, it's before the crap hit the fan. And I, I reckon that whenever we see somebody that can maybe do something, maybe it's like heater a ball that Bates can do, or pass a ball that Alves can do, or and you can go on and so forth. Um, we've not got good players. And the reason we've not got good players is because we're probably not spending in the right market. But apart from that, because sometimes you can pick up wee gems for not a lot of money. That wee guy at Kilmarnock's doing it, and other ones are doing it. Um, the bottom line that's wrong at Rangers Football Club is the board. Now, I know you can make a, a whole night on the board. I'm not asking you to do that now. That's, that's where I'm coming from. We've got a board that split and gave us a guy who plays football by thirds. We've got a board that gave us a football manager who nobody ever knew, Pedro. We've got a board who's now um, regressed in their thinking and thought, Oh no! What we don't know what to do, and we really can't see him out there. And rather than go pay top dollar, what we'll do is we'll just stick us um, under twenties guy. And then this is the bit that gets me. This guy does not deserve slagged at all. No, sure he's making mistakes. He's picking wrong players in our heads. He's picking wrong formations in our heads. But he's no manager. He's an under twenties coach. Now, I've heard Fox before saying he's sat such and such a badge and this badge. I don't really care if he's all the badges in the world. He's no a manager. He's never managed. And he's managing Rangers Football Club, who's at a stage in the development coming back from where we've been, that our fans are demanding to be better. And I can see that's true. I mean, we're now in the second time in this, this league. They keep, this board keep giving us... In my words, I'll use the words, and I don't care if somebody phones up and says I use the wrong words. They're duff. They're not good managers. And I say, I'm no putting that at the wee Marty guy's feet because it's not his fault. He's doing a favour. We need to get in a proper manager. And when you get a proper manager in, when I say proper, I mean a guy who knows the game. Not a guy who's maybe 30. I'm talking about a guy in his 50s and more. Has anybody got a pen and paper? Aye, but I'm nearly finished. No, wait a minute, I just, I just need to come in with this. Has anybody got a pen and paper? I want you to write this down. I agree with Al 63. Carry on, Al. Aye. <laughs> I want that guy to be the I want that signed up. What a good player is, what a bad player is. Like I say, we've been watching rubbish for years, and we're kidding ourselves on when we think, oh, that one's good, and that one's good. No, they're not. They're all bad. Every one of them. But, you can give the guy Doherty some leeway because he's a wee boy and he's just joined our club and I think he's got huge potential. I think he could go into the next Barry Ferguson sort of type player. Um, I know he's passing the rubbish yesterday. But they left him with a guy Dorns and a guy Harvey. Oh, I think you better scrap that bit of paper, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing all right up to then. But Doherty, right to then. He's, he's an attacking player. He always has been, but he's never been that good. He shouldn't be at Ibrox. I don't care if he supports us. You get a guy Halliday. I never knew how old he was to folks that he said, oh, he's a bear, this, that, that. Like, he's rubbish. He's not good at football. He shouldn't be at Irox. Sure, let him play for Motherwell or something like that, but I don't think any of these other teams in the league would even touch him. He's that bad. And yet we've played him against Celtic, and we know how good they are, although we don't like to admit it, we hate them. We know that. And we've got a guy, we've, we've got a guy there who's telling... Uh, we've all been calling for three midfield players, right? 
And yesterday he gave us it's not the three but probably pick, but he gave well, us not a ball one or amongst them, I'll, not a ball one uh-huh. amongst them. But I don't have got that in my club. Only the boy McCrory who was playing nah, centre back. He just fouls and they even showed it. He gave away a penalty. Anyway, forget about him. I don't like the harshing him either because again he's just a boy and he's learning. Um, and coming back for injury as well. I, I wouldn't have him in the first team. He shouldn't have been in the first team. He's too young. He's not. He's, he's still learning. He shouldn't be there. Um, the guy Clark that everybody talks about. I wouldn't touch him with a bar's pole. Now I know he's got a good record. He would turn us down. He turned us down quicker than the wee boy for Aberdeen. I don't he, think it. He would I don't great doing that because I don't think it'd be a good fix. I don't think it'd be. No, a good not fix. at all. Not at all. I'm funny. That's sorry. A, <laughs> no, I, I get your thing. This, but it's in my, it's in my soul. No, I, I want Rangers to be winning the league. I, I think everybody on here, <laughs> everybody. Um, but we can't do it until this board's taken care of. The board does. I don't think it's the right board. I think it's either. Um, I think the board have done some things that's positive Aye, for the right. club. But the football decisions have been very, very poor. Al. Yeah. I. I, I like the, 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 no, the, the white snake the, the group. But I'm not going to start uh, money into them. But if there's a white snake group, a uh, group of fans out there that throw money at it, give me your money. I'll, I'll definitely use it. Uh-huh. I think the, the board have got a job of work today. Ultimately, they've got to bring an investment if we're going to help. <coughs> and then the, the first, the big decision. Oh, they could put us up for sale now. We know the basket case we were. We've now got 100 million we could, debt. We, we, could, we could be put up for sale, but what I'm saying is the, the, be, the biggest appointment at a football club is the manager. I'll take this to Ryan. Only because yes, he's, played, he's, played the game, he's played the game at the higher level. They don't go to bridge 100%. because they, that's two, uh-huh. ge- well, two generations there. And we've got it wrong. Ox, we just need to look across the look across to them, mate. Um, semi, semi-final last year. Um, I was getting the, sorry, a couple of years ago and I was getting the result again saying push them into um, going out and getting the best man possible for the job. And, uh, and we need to do the same but uh, I think we're all missing a point here which actually could stop us forgetting the type of manager that we're actually wanting and that's the fact that the director of football role and how many managers I and Neil Warnock or uh, you know for instance a Frank De Boer even if it was going to be Frank De Boer or Roberto, Roberto Martinez how, how many of them are going to come to Rangers when they're not over you they say but listen sorry you'll be working under a director of football and this will be the recruitment policy and you'll and he'll, he'll make the signings and you'll do this and that. So I think we need to look at that, where that structure, maybe Disney possibly work for clubs in Scotland, maybe because I know Brendan Rodgers has the total control in day-to-day running a Celtic football club, as in the playing department. You know, Peter Lawwell and whatever does the rest of it, but Brendan Rodgers, training ground, football department, everything is the manager and that's it. So I think that might um, impede how we're, who we're looking at who we're going to get, who we're going to bring in. Um, and the type of manager we're, we're looking for possibly might not be want to come to Rangers unless they're given that the assurances. And I know that might have been an issue with, with McInnes as well, whether we dodged a bullet or no. Right? <clears throat> so we need to look at that and think, is that structure right for us? Is, can, are we going to go down that road and are we going to continue with that? And, and what even is the structure? We think we need clarity on, is it the director of football who brings the players in and the, the, the first team manager simply coaches them and, and, and picks the formation and, and blah, blah, blah. So, but you're right what you're saying, mate. The most important person and the highest paid person at your club must be the manager. And there must be the manager who has that respect where every player who's at the club already and every player who's coming into the club looks at him and thinks he's the manager of the football club and there's ultimate respect there. I, I read something today and I don't know if it's true that there's only two players... Uh, played yesterday that Brendan Rodgers has brought to the club um, since we beat them in that semi-final. Only two new players. The rest of them all played in that game. That's the difference. And that's what a, a real proper manager can bring to you as a football club. Um, the difference slightly is, is, I think, looking at that, Celtic always had good players, but under Dyer there were different things and Rodgers has come in and made them different. We don't really have players who have that quality there and within them. So, so that's an issue, but it's amazing to think that the only two players he brought into that he brought into that team, and that's what a proper manager can give it. <coughs> Bridgeman. 
Yeah, I can't, you can't disagree with anything said there. It's, it's absolutely true. I, I, we've said it at the time. Uh, un- unfortunately, we, we've missed a, bo- missed a, st- a skip. We've skipped a step there somewhere. Uh, maybe it's because of the finance. Now, based on what we know, allegedly we've got some finance. And all I'm saying is, and I'm sure that every single person will probably agree with me, take whatever finance we've got within a pers- within a certain perspective. Think what we're going to do, because you need to take into account we've got this... Uh, the format we've got at the top of the tree here with the director of football and find the best manager that everybody in the world respects a name that people know not somebody that somebody maybe heard of and maybe know go back two years to, to we played them in the when we're, in fact three three years now we played them in the semi in the semi final of the cup and we beat them uh, and my god I, I said it then and I, I continue to say it that's the best result the Rangers have ever had in my opinion <coughs> And it's the worst result that Celtic have ever had. We were a championship team and they hated us and always did. And that was us trying to make our way back. And we beat them and they couldn't take it. And they went and they sold their, they got rid of their manager. That was the nail in his coffin, the final nail, gone. And there they spent two or three million pounds bringing him in. And you know, Ryan's right. The squad that, uh, that uh, the man inherited, it was, uh, uh, it was misfits because they were talking about get selling, getting rid of knee neck. And they were going to get rid of this and going to get rid of that one. And he's pulled them all together, brought a few people in, made them all gel. And actually, I believe sincerely that he's got them fitter than they ever were before and far, far fitter than we are, based on what I saw yesterday. That's all I've got to say. Funny thing, you mentioned your fitness, mate. I don't think we've had uh, the boy, is it Craig Farnigan that came for Hibs? I don't think we've progressed since he came in when Walbert was there. That's just a personal and a side note. I just Correct. want to take this... Okay, just, go, I'll make just, it, just a wee, a wee tiny shot thing. Aye. It's with Brisman talking about the fitness thing. No, no, I, I can see it dead easy. I can see their worst player fitting their best. But no, the difference is when you've got a better standard of the player, they have a better standard of the fitness. And that's why, or part of the reason why, they're a far, far better um, person to bring in your fitness team. You can attain a better fitness from a better thoroughbred, if you like, if you want to Men, men to Mentally horses. fitter as well, and then when you're oh, not chasing the ball, all these things come in. All right, I'm going to take this to True Boy, who's a, what you would call a traditionalist. Um, rumours have it, and it's only rumours of uh, the our team was leaked on Saturday night. Um, does that worry you, True? Of course it does, mate. Uh, I knew it. Oh, you're no True Boy, yeah. Alan. That Sorry, Frodo too. Baggins in again. <laughs> Sorry, man. No, really. Ah, yeah, it was. It was mentioned. Oh, back <laughs> It was mentioned briefly yesterday. Uh, aye, it's worrying. It's really worrying. Uh, you don't get your horn away at poker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Assuming aye. we had a horn, but uh, aye, I oh. may ultimately made it worse if we'd have kept it a surprise. But it's, it's, I, I don't. I believe think... I don't do Twitter, but supposedly on Twitter. On uh, uh, Sunday morning, it broke. Ox, so, ox, mate. Can I can yeah, try to cut you go, really, really yeah, quickly, mate? Just on. to say on that point, mate. I got that. I got the Rangers team texting me Saturday night for ten o'clock until midnight about twenty odd times, mate. I have twenty different people, so it was rife out there, and it was one hundred percent spot on. That's what I was just trying to say, who's mate. Who's that speaking? Because I don't recognise him. Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, my brother was with Andy Howell, his sister in law. Can I finish you know, my point? Right, is there right. any chance in it? Big Al, Al 63, calm down, we've got all week. All give, week. Give two a gun. <laughs> <laughs> all week we've got. On you go, through Blue. Well, I can you know I've got a sore throat, I've gabbed that much. <laughs> no, for me, I don't think they're playing for him yet. You made the point about Dale, your team. Uh, they were cheating us, Alex. Some they were cheating us, Alex, support, and I reckon a decent manager would get better with the crew. We've got at Ibrox at the minute. Uh, I don't think they're playing for him anymore. I really don't. Can Dale said a wee dig at him, and I'm not so sure Andy Halliday was shouting at a fan when he, he gets subbed. Uh, I think that's the point. Listen, I'm going to drop out anyway, Ox. You've got hundreds right. of callers on, mate. But thanks Please to all the should... boys that phoned in yesterday in old school blue, obviously. All right? Here, here, mate. Here, here, mate. Night, lads. Cheers, mate. Night, sure. Hey, uh, Uncle. Hey, okay. uh, Big Ulster. Big Ulster. Is that something that worries you, the fact that the team was leaked? Uh, Twitter, according to Twitter, um, Josh Wendy's his father was telling people he was a substitute, and then, obviously... Sometimes these things are only rumours, but it turned out to be true. 
Well, I don't, I don't see why it's coming as a surprise. It's been happening all season. I, it's a, there's pages on Facebook. If you want to know the Rangers team, you can find the Rangers team. If you're playing on a Saturday, you'll find it on a Friday night. That's been, that's not a new thing. That's been something that's been happening all season. So I don't know why it's such a surprise that it's happened. You know, because suppose that's how I'm getting all the teams right on a Friday night. <laughs> yeah. But it is happening. There's a page I'm on. It's a private Rangers page, like on the Facebook, and there's a guy, same couple of guys, put up the team every week. So we know the team every week. I see my dad. I I ring my dad. And I just took the team for a while, and uh, that's the team that's always playing on the, the next the next game. So it's been something that's been happening for a long, long time, to be honest. And it's something that needs to be looked at a long time before now. Uh, Fox, then George Logan. Well, that that just shows you that. The players in the day. I keep going back to the players, mate. It's uh, them that's leaking it. I don't mm-hmm. think Mr. Murphy would have released his team. I don't think any of his assistants would have released the team. So it shows to me that there's players in who don't respect who's in charge of them, mate. They give the opposition a wee leg up by announcing the team. And uh, this board came in and they promised they would stop the leaks out of Ibrox. But it depends who's leaking it to me. There's certain people, certain forums that get information before any of the rest of the Rangers platforms. Yeah. And it's done constantly, mate. But nobody complains about it because it's maybe their platform that's getting all these so-called inf- insider information. But all that does harm to the club, mate, for me. And it's about time, as I say, the board should be looking into what happened in that dressing room on Sunday, and find the culprits, mate. That's what they should be doing. I'm just going to, going to repeat that, Fox. Going to repeat that, that Foxy. Oh, sorry. They don't respect Graham Murray, but how can you expect players to respect the manager when he's... Ryan made a good point for me. After the, the, the game, he's in his interview, he's scared to get into the dressing room in case he creates conflict. You imagine Jock Wallace being scared of conflict. Graham soon is scared of conflict. Walter Smith, uh, Smith. Scared of conflict. He's all, he's actually on Sky Sports saying, eh, no, I'm not going to go and have a go at them because I might create conflict. Jock Wallace would have been straight in there to create as much conflict as he possibly could have been. Could have done it. So would Walter Smith and Graham Soonis. I mean, for a manager to come out with that, I mean, that's a good point that I make. I saw that interview. For a, a manager, no wonder the players don't respect him. How do you expect to... Players they respect a man that they don't fear that they're no worried about offending in any way. Do they? You know, that, you can't that, that's just that, not on much. That same thing happened under Warburton and Pedro. Both yeah, of them didn't address right. till what was it, Mondays? Did they address to Mondays? Aye. Uh, yeah. Who's coming in? Who's coming in? Wheels. On you go, mate. Right, I'm going to read you something very quickly, right? This will take two seconds, right, going to, just when we're talking about things that are happening, you know, weeks and all this, right. New big bugs, new, re- new big bugs. <laughs> no, no, no I'm going to read you four tweets. Some of you might know about this, some of you might not, right. These are the four tweets. This is our city. Ha, 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 Morelos. Ha, 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 the Hun Scalper's back. Oh, man, I love Celtic. Right. Four tweets. That was fair, youth. Tweets, those, four tweets came, youth. those four tweets have came from a youth player at Rangers. Yes, you left, uh, the, the young boy left the club last year. It was confirmed by, I remember, uh, staff the day, mate. The guy Stuart you know, uh, said that. The uh, guy Stuart said that he had left last season. He left last year. Last year. So it's a better yeah. ex-employee. So there we go. Aye, but that's it. That's it. The world's changed with social media. And some. I think the point that Mills is trying to make it, have we got to be sensible in my recruitment, when we're recruiting people to work for our club? That might... Exactly. Exactly, mate. Um, is that something that uh, bothers you, George, about the leaks, etc.? Um, obviously, it can give us something to talk about, but putting your team out, letting the opposition know small advantages and all that, man, or lack of discipline, does it worry you? Aye, of course it does, it's, and it's all, all to do with respect, and that's what my point is in about having a guy uh, where we went with a 
Uh, house behind them, Ox, you've got a guy there, I keep on mentioning the same guy, Alex McLeish and all these guys, they would, uh, they would go in and, and find out who the culprit was and they would put an end to it. Now, it's simple, if Murray, I'm not blaming Murray, but if Murray, Murray tells him the team the night before, this is the team, get prepared, and let's just say somebody goes and tells the Dan and Darko, it's on tour, come on, I mean, this guy's a professional football player, he's been a professional football player, he should come in and saw about Ox. That's how simple a league is. Folks seem to think it comes from Kenny Miller and that. It doesn't come from people like that. It comes from drunken idiots on Twitter the night before, and that's exactly where it was. Ten past ten on Saturday night, and every single person in Scotland had the Rangers team. That's embarrassing, Ox. Absolutely embarrassing. And uh, okay. much you should be able to tell them the team the night before, because that's the way you do it. You shouldn't need to Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I just question? say, for the record, mate, there was two people, well, three people never had the team at ten past uh, ten and Saturday yeah, I didn't night. Ever. That was me, Fox, and Corby Loyal, but that was a different story. <laughs> <laughs> I but can, can I ask a question on that? Can I ask a question on that, guys, please? If people like you guys knew the team and, and Windass and so on and so forth knew the team, did, 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 did the manager know that it had been leaked? I would imagine he must have done, eh? And if so, why didn't he just change it? Well, that's what I said just to do the show, Bridgeman. Why did he not? Uh, I'm going? sorry, I never heard the show. I was sitting, I was sitting there there. Sorry, Why? pal. I was just going there yesterday morning and turning and say, Ken son, I'm going to make two changes. Whether it's for the hang with the team or whether it's no, I'm not giving them a heat start. I'm going to change Halliday for Ho, oh, I'm going to change this one, just make a wee change. I, I think that's what I would have done because I, knowing the yeah. exact team and the substitutes and never with the Kens away we're going to line up is just, and yet, see, to be honest, it wouldn't matter then. Anyway, we're probably going to pump with that bunch of comp- uh, imposters in the team. But the point of the matter is you're giving them a heat start straight away, Bridge. That's, that's the point. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just no right. If- if, if they know, sorry, I forget, I'll say a big F here. If the management knew on Sunday morning that uh, somehow or other the team had been leaked, A, by a member of staff, and if they knew who it was, there's absolutely no way that guy would be playing. Absolutely no way he would be playing in my team. No chance. If you knew it, right? If you knew it. Because if, 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 if it was Windass and he's told his dad and his dad put, has put it out in, in Twitter, Twitter land, uh, and then the whole world knows about it if they want to know about it. I think it's shock- I think it's just shocking. And uh, you know, I heard the report tonight that uh, uh, after the match, uh, Mr. Murty had a long conversation with the tranny man, uh, holding Fuck hands. Sake. And you know, <laughs> I'll tell you, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, you know, it's, it's not right, man. It's not right. It's not right. You should have poked in it, man. It keeps you the absolute box. Oh, it's the same with that Bruno like, Alves, wasn't it, man? It just keeps you the absolute box, so it does. I, thought, I don't think the trouble is we'll get people over club that don't understand me. They don't mm, understand. Can I, yeah. can I say something? Like I don't really think it, it matters one iota if the other guy knows your team. I think it's different if you're maybe new to the game and say it's like Brenda's first game and he's, oh, I wonder how he's going to play this game. I think that would matter. I don't think it matters now. If he just saw the three, <laughs> take it from me, if he just saw that we had three in the midfield, he would have known what we were doing. And I don't think the Celtic players walking onto that pitch knew that they were doing either because it took them like, oh, I don't know, five, six months to get started when they hit the post. So, so Alan, I'm, I'm I just being, want to ask I'm you being a question. daft about it. No, I know, right? but I just want to ask you a question. Tell you, Alan. Why, if, in fact, if in fact it doesn't matter, in your, in your opinion, it doesn't matter who knows the team, why did all the clubs leave it until roughly an hour before kickoff? Because they announced scared. the teams? I'm sure well, what Joe Laws didn't, didn't no, no, but what are they scared mess about of? an hour before a game. I'm no, sure he used are, to read in the paper what his team What are they scared of? What are they scared of? What, the, the other guy might kind of change things? It's because they're all playing tactics. Well, it's all tactics, isn't it? Right, they're tactics. all kidding each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're right. rotten here. Well, okay. Okay. Folks, tell me, then. I'll tell you how it matters. I have watched I have watched Celtic the run-up to our game, mate. That is the first time that I've seen them play with uh, the fullback and James Forrest as wide as that. What they done was, mate, they changed their normal tactics and stretched to the midfield that we have and came right through the middle. I said that at the start of the programme. They haven't played like that against us before. Knowing the tactics is <laughs> a big, big benefit in football, mate. Any manager would tell you that. Is it the discipline as well, Fox, and the, and the, and the respect? Well, it, it, all it does is the mayor, he's come up with things like this, this shows me that there's something rotten in the dressing room, mate, because 
If they're leaking teams, they're not carrying out what the man in charge is asking them to do. He keeps coming on in press conferences and say, I don't understand, that's not what I tell them what to do. So that they're, they're, they're no doing what they're told. They've decided they know better than the manager. And how's that turned out for the players? Many defeats have we had now in the last 10 games because they think they know better. Mm-hmm. Fair comment, mate. Fox, yeah. do, you yeah. think, do you know how just, just, you know, just quickly, mate, that one of your players who has gone back for a loan spell, who's no had a sniff, who is a predominantly Celtic fan, whose father works for Celtic under 20s, Disney tell his dad, the Rangers team, the night before the old firm game? That is a possibility, mate, but everything's a possibility. You can say that, but I know who you're talking about. Everybody knows that's listening knows who you're talking about. But he's he's dead easy to pin the blame on, mate. Yeah, can I put it to, to bed right now? Walter Brown is out in the town, which he do too well. Um, with drink, let's say. Um, and he wasn't out drinking, but he happened to be in a... It was two clubs he was in. And it was the first club that he was in, with my brother-in-law, who also does not drink, but they were out for something to eat. Um, and it was Andy Halliday's sister that was in their company with her friends. And it was Andy Halliday's sister that told him, he said round about 10 o'clock, he never texted me to 10 past 10 and told me this, the team. He says, I've just been told it by Andy Halliday's sister. Oh. There's nothing, nothing to grind. He doesn't go online, he doesn't play with computers or anything like that. He's got nothing to hide. He told me that straight in his street. He's play with computers. Yeah, what? Just the gate or anything? No, just the two or us. Uh, just... And that's a wee, that's a wee story that you've heard and hang me, but you can't no, come out and say it was from my brother. I'm just, I'm just saying, unless you've got definite proof, mate, you can't mention I, 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 any player's I, 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 name, you know. But I still come back. To, I don't care. The night before at Fox, she went and said, "I hope we play." <laughs> with, and I can't remember what your set-up was, you wanted us to play this defensive game. Now what I'm going to see in your defence is, you'd have thought they were going to set up and say play a defensive game and try catch them on the break. They're sitting like three, four and five yards at times after playing in front of them. What was that about? Our guys weren't even close to their guys to tackle. Sure, they were following them a bit at times, but they weren't anywhere near them. I think, most people, I think most people. I think most people would have set up a fourth. And it was under Craig Brown, and Craig Brown was axed so long after it. I think if yeah, most people would have set up four, five, one yesterday, but it wouldn't have been quite that. Anyway, lads, we've reached that time in the evening. Who was want to come in last there? Um, last uh, one. I just wanted to say one really quick thing for the show. Make it quick. That there was a there was a moment, and it was just after McCrory got sent off, and they brought Alves on. The camera panned to Marty. And he signalled four two three one. You you're just showing Brenda what you want to do. Do you know what I mean? That that to me that's down to his experience. He showed them what he wanted to do. You don't signal like that. You say it to the player that you're bringing on to pass it on. But he showed it to everybody there and then what he wanted to change. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, here's a shout out, Will. Um. Well, just. Glad to be back with you guys. Um, I'm feeling a lot better. You'll be glad to know. So I'm no, um, I'm no feeling better, but that's just me. <laughs> no, you, I, you know, what I mean, um, just obviously things that have been happening, but no, I'm feeling better than I was. Good to hear um, it. Good to hear it, mate. Thanks very much. Al sixty-three. Oh, lost Al. Uh, big old stuff. Well, didn't we're working. Oh, hurry up, mate. Hurry oh, up. I'm right, going speaking to short, sweet, I'm saying. Um, <laughs> aye, quick second. My shout outs went to Marty too many times. Um, I'm pulling it back now. You ain't getting it anymore. And Rangers fans, you need to do something about this. Right, big old stuff. I just a, a shout out to the board. A crisis meeting, please, with your players and with the management staff and find out what the hell's going on over there. Yep. Uh, George Logan. Ah, yes, we're, we're all hot in the New Orleans, but we'll get back. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll all get back and we'll all be back to the top because Rangers deserve to be at the top because we're a winning team and we'll get their rocks. Hope you're right, bro. Mount Vernon. Can I just say to all the undesirables that they're listening, just remember 
we don't we are proud of our history, we don't hide our history. Um and can I just say we are the people, can I just say the twenty four thousand Rangers supporters who represented our club yesterday should be extremely proud of ourselves. Team, let's get it sorted. Board, get it sorted. We are the people. Rudy Bear. Uh, we shout out to Gary there, Wheels. I hope I'm glad you're feeling better, mate. But a shout out to True and Blue Shadow and Big Al, who that must have been hard work that show at the weekend. I had to be listening to it, and uh, I don't think I could have done it. I was too angry at the time, but I couldn't get on anyway. Uh, to the board, you've messed up here big time. We deserve better. No surrender. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan, just a shout out to all the Rangers fans, all the world guys, all the Rangers fans that were there yesterday that go week in, week out, travel, miles and miles, spend absolute fortunes. We are undoubtedly the best fans in the world. Uh, and that's what I'm going to sell that up. Yeah, yeah. Fox? I'll just echo the rest of the boys' shouts out there, mate. Yeah, yeah. Rinch, man? What can I say? Marvellous night tonight, great discussions. Unfortunate to follow on for yesterday. But it's been really good. A bit uplifting for some folk. I guess, I guess a bit of a bail out of them. I'm not criticising anyone. I'm, that's the way I am. I don't want to criticise you because you could be going and on and on. But can I just say to all the Rangers fans all over the world, and particularly the Rangers fans on here on Rangers Radio, every single one of us, we need to do this. We need to support the team. We need to stick by them. See it to the end of the season. And let's go on with it. Everybody, keep it going for the Rangers. Just keep it going. Here, here. Can I thank all the callers this evening? Too, too numerous to mention, but we'll be back tomorrow night between 9 and 11. Talking about all things Rangers, uh, just remember, never forgive and never forget. Take it away, Fox.